Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to the meeting of the Georges River Local Planning Panel for the 22nd of April 2021. My name is Sue Francis, and I'm the chair of the panel today. And we're currently streaming from the Council Chambers in McMahon Street, Hurstville. The panel members who make up the panel today are Milan Merashek, expert panel member, Jason Perica, expert panel member, and Fiona Prod Do you know I've never pronounced your surname. <laughs> Fiona Podroma, there you go, uh, who's our community representative. Sorry, Fiona. Um, now, I'd like to acknowledge country and the panel acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which this meeting is being broadcast as that of the Vidigal people of the Aora Nation. Um, now, we are being live streamed today and just need to let you know that that live stream is available on Council's website. Now we have four, four items on the agenda today. They are um, at 9 Marine Drive, Oakley, 16 Leslie Crescent, Mortdale, 2 to 8 James Street, Blakehurst, and 29 to 31 Dora Street, Hurstville. Uh, in relation to those items, I have seven people who have registered, registered to speak. And they are in this order, and I'll let you know the order so that you'll know roughly when you're likely to be called back on. So the first speaker is Caroline Hatton for Nine Marine Drive. And then I have been asked to read out a submission from Dr. Sharon Cullis, who is not able to attend the meeting. And then there is a, the next speaker is um, the applicant for Nine Marine Drive, which is uh, Stephanie Karofsky. Then the third speaker is Paul Bricknell in relation to the Leslie Crescent matter. And then the applicant, Tony Mijowski. Item The fifth speaker is Gerard Cherisi in relation to James Street. And then the architect, Ricardo Adirossi, uh, is also down to speak. And the final speaker is um, Lewis McCauley from Willow Tree, the applicant in relation to the Dora Street matter. In relation to the items that are on the agenda, I just need to confirm and I will confirm that uh, no panel member has disclosed any conflict of interest in relation to any of the four items on the agenda today. So as we progress through the matters on the agenda, only those persons who are ready to speak will verbally be able to make any representations to the panel. I would ask those people who are invited to speak uh, that they speak clearly and of a volume that will project to the speakers and to assist those viewing the live streaming so they can be heard clearly. At this time, I remind all people that any defamatory, discriminatory or offensive language used may result in the author being exposed to liability for which counsel and the panel take no responsibility. Now, once we've heard all the oral submissions and in the order that I've already identified on a particular application, we will then move to the next application, etc. And the determination of the application were made in closed session, which is not live streamed or recorded. And the determination will be made available on Council's website within 24 hours of the meeting. So what we'll do now is we'll call the first item and the speaker in relation to that first item. And the first item is Nine Marine Drive Oakley. And we have Caroline Hatton who wants to make representations in relation to that matter. So perhaps we'll call Caroline. Thank you very much. Caroline, are you there? Yes, I am. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Caroline, the floor is yours. We support sensitive redevelopment of the site of Number Marine Drive, Number 9. We note the amendments subsequent to the first proposal have made some reduction to the impact. Our original concerns, however, do remain that the proposed development represents excessive built form in relation to the current environment and is not consistent with the intent of development in a foreshore scenic protection area. We refer the panel to the detailed accurate submissions against this development of 21 concerned neighbours and local area guardians, including the State Member of Parliament. Firstly, the streetscape impacts. This proposed development appears as a three-storey form when viewed from the public domain due to the garage storage area proposed and two storeys above. The proposal presents a significant bulk and scale on the site that's inconsistent with the character of Jewish Point and is an overdevelopment in this context. 
The council minimum front set back to a garage from the street is stated in the planning report to this panel as being 5.5 metres. The development proposes this be violated with a 2.16 setback. Marine Drive is narrow, curving, with multiple driveways and minimal street parking. The development needs to maintain a setback that allows stacked car parking in the driveway to assist overall car management, safety and the leafy streetscape character. The planning discussion and document states that non-compliance is supported on merit as there are numerous examples in the immediate locality of the garages um, close to the street boundary and sadly this is correct on the opposite side of the street where the cliff foreshore allows little room. The existing houses on the side of the road of number nine are set back. They're stepped into the sand, they're built back from the road, meeting council requirements. They're single double story or split level. To further reduce the quality of the streetscape based on the argument that quality is already impaired is irrational and not meritorious. The proposed development would be very much in conflict with the surrounding built and natural environment and the ethical adherence to council regulations by existing residents. We ask the panel to ensure the proposed development is reduced in length and bulk, that no further bench cutting is allowed on this steeply sloping block and adherence to all local and state controls, published policy and plan regulations. The coastal and foreshore impacts are as follows. The state environment and planning policy objective aims to maintain and improve amenity of foreshores and protect values, vegetation and animal habitats. This DA proposes destruction of four trees, including a healthy, visible and most beautiful jacaranda and the pruning of two healthy, tall, old growth ridgeline angophora, violating the above objectives. While the ridgeline canopy cannot be seen from the waterline, it is highly visible from surrounding streets, Jewfish and Gunga Bays across the two valleys to east and west, as verified in photographs in previous submissions. We ask the panel to prevent the removal and destruction of these trees and require this building be reduced in size, bulk and design to be a more sensitive development. The amenity impacts. The foreshore protection area states that the minimum size setbacks are 900 metres ground floor with 1.5 first floor. This DA proposes non-compliant setbacks ranging from 1.2. The senior planner states this non-compliance should be supported on merit. We strongly disagree. As a southern neighbour, even with the correct setbacks, our amenity and sunlight are reduced and there is no basis for further encroachment. We ask the panel to abide by the setback controls and require the size and bulk of this oversized development be reduced. In terms of solar access, the LPP00621 states the windows of number 11 Marine Drive, our home, impacted by the proposal are on the northern side of the building. However, these windows are not all located in the primary living areas and that overshadowing is negligible. This statement is inaccurate as all but one of the north facing large windows located on the ground and upper floor of our house are in lounge areas. This is evidenced by photos already submitted. Most of our days are spent in the warmth and light of these lounge family rooms which are most definitely primary living areas. It's not negligible for us to have our light and warmth totally prevented in the warmest part of the day and the hours of this warmth and light reduced to only three hours. We dispute the LPP00621 as follows in terms of the shadow diagrams. We refer the panel to the first DA which showed more meaningful diagrams and a clear increase in shadowing over our house. We refer the panel to the photographs submitted previously that evidence the winter sun in our primary living areas, that evidence the leafy valley views and sky of the Georges River that will be obliterated by the high wall, flat roof and shadow of this oversized development. In the social impact statement on page 29 of the document, the proposal says it's considered, if not considered to result in unreasonable material economic impact. Well, with the loss of sun, warmth, light, significant views, amenity and natural environment, regardless of damage that might occur to us from the build, it is hard to argue that we will not suffer economic impact. There are omissions in the DA, such as the placement of any air conditioning units. 
these will affect our amenity if they're placed opposite our front door or the principal living areas as is a proposed clothesline. We ask the panel to prevent the severe overshadowing to implement designated setbacks to safeguard our amenity by reducing the size and bulk of this oversized development. Finally, on almost every page of the LPP 00621, there are many generalisations and unclear statements that are accepted without detail or stated reasons. For example, the proposal is generally satisfactory subject to conditions. The density and height of the proposal and design generally satisfy zone objectives. The development form and scale is not inconsistent with build form. All of that, I think, might have been disproved by a site visit, so I'm hoping so that you saw what the reality is. The development control plan, plan claims the DA addresses the key features of the neighbourhood. Compliance is recommended on, from that document based on an opinion that published regulations should be ignored, that vague recommendations will suffice, that details and justifications can be withheld. A subjective concept of what's merit and a yes in the compliance column resulted in, and I'm quoting, the proposal is a reasonable redevelopment of the site. My husband and I asked this panel to consider the 21 submissions that have been submitted, principally by neighbours who live in and value the area, supported by our state MP. They all object to the proposal and disagree that the development complies or is appropriate in the context of a foreshore protection area. We ask the panel finally to uphold reference 6.4, the objective of the Foreshore Scenic Protection Act, to recognise, protect and enhance the natural, visual, environmental and heritage qualities of the scenic areas. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Carolyn. I will now read um, verbatim the submission from Dr Sharon Collis, who has uh, asked this to be read. Um, no, com no comments will be made, but I will read it just uh, because she can't be met here. So here it is. My statement is this. I was one of 21 objectors to the original DA for Nye Marine Drive. My husband and I lived across the road for more than 35 years. Like most of the other objectors within the neighbourhood, we value the dominance of the nature over the built form in our neighbourhood. Its leafiness, the fact that it provides habitat for the rich range of native animals and birds, and its vegetation that provides a beautiful backdrop from the Georges River foreshores to the ridge line. Nine Marine Drive sits along the ridge line and its tree canopy is part of an unbroken one that view, when viewed especially from Webster's Lookout in Oakley Park, which provides one of the most scenic views in the whole of the LGA. The valleys of the foreshore Scenic protection areas should be uppermost in the terms of criteria when the application is assessed. I hope that you read my original submission. Oh, I won't read that. Um, I'm grateful that the tree count, the council's tree officer intervention has achieved a much better result, whereby tree removal now will be three rather than the original eight. I support the ratio of two to one tree replacement. However, the fact is that the removal, particularly of the large jacaranda, will leave a hole in the horizon line tree canopy as viewed from Oakley Park and the western shoreline of Jewfish Bay, George's River. I therefore hope that the replacement trees will be advanced species and will eventually achieve the same height as the jacaranda lost. Clearly positioning also matters in this regard. That does not mean the replacements need to be in exactly the same place, but rather in an alignment that fills the canopy hole. The so-called compliance in terms of soft landscape metric of 35% is really not sufficient. Every LGA must have micro pockets that offer housing choice and some that maximise biodiversity values to offset other areas that are severely lacking in this respect. The Jewfish Bay neighbourhood precinct looks after nature and the presence of it is the reason why many existing residents live here and new ones come. So a qualitative standard around this landscape character should be applied here. If you examine aerial image, imagery, the soft landscaping metric of the area devoted to nature rather than built form is in excess of 50% for most properties. This DA should be better than it is. I feel concerned for the neighbours at Levin Marine Drive who will be disadvantaged by the loss of solar access. The new construction next door will deliver. This will be a 
a favourite winter time living space. Thank you for consideration. Thank you very much for that, um, Dr. Cullis. Um, we now have Stephanie Krofsky, who's the applicant, on behalf of the applicant, if we can call. She's there. Stephanie, are you there? Hey, you going? Yep, the floor is yours if you'd like it. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to, um, obviously, I've gone through the, um, the summary in regards to this uh, meeting. I just want to go through the concerns of the submissions and also the concerns of what we, you just addressed at the moment by the two um, people who actually live within the, within the vicinity. Um, one, the, the actual site is not in foreshore protection area, which is that lot at the moment. Uh, foreshore protection areas are more so that are on the other side of Nine Marine Drive that have used and direct access to the water. So the site setbacks aren't meant to be 1.5, they're actually 1.2, which we comply with. Um, we're actually minimum at 1.46, so if anything, we are over what we are meant to be on the ground floor and the first floor to give space to both neighbours and, you know, um, not have any, any privacy concerns whatsoever. Uh, if all the windows that are on number 11 marine drive side, they're either splashbacks or highlights or um, uh, opaque, so they are frosted, so we don't have any direct visual in any of the neighbouring properties. Uh, those who are on number seven, uh, we are more than four metres away from the neighbouring, uh, that neighbour itself, so we're trying to keep as far away as possible and reduce any impacts for privacy concerns as much as possible. Um, now also for the retractable clothesline that's on the ground floor on the boundary of number 11 Marine Drive, we can move it. If, if, if you guys are worried about that, it, it, things like that are, are really minor for us. So it's, I'm, I'm happy to relocate that wherever you wish and you think it's a, a, better, a better idea. We just put it there just to be away from the trees pretty much to get it away from you know, having any dirty um, excess droppings from, from birds and whatnot. Um, we have 12 current trees that we are maintaining, so we try to reach not get rid of all of them. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a greenie myself, I live in Menai. Um, so we, we, we only got rid of the ones that we really needed to. One is actually on the boundary fence, which is um, a weed, and two uh, out of the four actually ended up being, one of them is actually not healthy. Uh, we have an arborist report about it. And we've also, to maintain the existing trees that we have there at the moment, we have built on brick piers and left open the whole alfresco at the rear, and we haven't protruded the building envelope and footprint of the existing dwelling as to the rear, um, so we can protect those trees. So the less impact we, we, we cause to them, the better. Um, now, as for the whole bulk and scale, I am aware that number three marine drive is also actually modern. Um, so if, if we're trying to set a precinct at the moment, uh, I think it's already been set. Um, now, uh, as for the uh, overshadowing, um, uh, because I, I am aware that we kind of look like we're three stories, but we aren't. Um, the existing residence at the moment looks like that as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of contradicting, if that makes sense. Um, we try to keep it as low as possible as well, uh, obviously because the land is so high at the front and then drops towards the rear. Uh, it, it's, really, it's actually a really difficult site. Um, so it, that's why we try to maintain where the garage was because the existing garage is a lot closer to the front boundary, so we wanted to set it back. Um, but council actually advised us that they wouldn't want us protruding into um, the cut, cutting the actual um, property itself. So we just moved it back enough not to have to cut, um, I think, it, which is more than what we have at the moment. As for car parking and, and all that, I, I am aware that all the neighbours on the opposite, opposing side of the, 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 the road are on boundary, so it is a bit of a, how's it going for your parking? I, I understand, that's why we try, we actually put a double garage, um, so we can get at least them off the road. Um, as for also the uh, overshadowing, yes. Um, just one second. I just want to double check something before I say this. <laughs> well, I got these up. 
Okay. Um, now, the existing residence rich height at the moment is 53.57, so that's the existing house. We're actually lower than the existing. Uh, we're 52.55. Um, now, if, if we're talking about overshadowing, that means I'm assuming then the existing house would be overshadowing more than the proposed house, especially number 11, especially when we're actually further away from the southern, from that boundary. Um, I, we, the only difference, if it were, if you were in the, I guess, number seven and the north wall is on the opposite direction, then it'd be more concerning as we have been, we've actually pushed forward on that side, but not on the number 11 side as council wanted us to maintain the existing building envelope of the property at the moment. Um, so obviously we don't protrude too much of your, of your sunlight into your living, um, living spaces, whether it's your kitchen, I guess it kind of doesn't really make a difference as long as you still get windows. Um, sorry, light in all those windows, um, whether it's a kitchen, toilet, uh, as we, we do maintain a minimum of three hours. Um, now, I am aware that um, the one that the owner on number 11 stated that they are living room windows. Um, we've actually done shadow elevations, I'm not too sure if you've noticed, through um, June equinox, which is around September and then December. So you do get sunlight in those. I'm able to do more shadow diagrams because it's actually only for 9, 12, and 3 p.m. But I am aware if I done from 8 to 4 p.m., you will maintain more than three hours in June. Um, and overall for equinox, and uh, which is September and December, you get more than three hours sunlight as well. So we are above the minimum and beyond uh, council's controls. The only thing that we pretty much do not comply with is the front step back of the proposed garage, um, only because we were pretty much you know, eliminated from pushing it further back, um, because obviously we don't even have a staircase to enter internally, which obviously if you're building a new residence, you would prefer. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you for that, Sydney. I'll just ask the panel if any members have got a question, so shaking their heads. Sure. No, that would be, no, no questions for you. Thank you very much indeed, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll now move on to the um, second item on the agenda, which is 16 Leslie Street, Leslie Crescent, Mortdale. And I have Paul Bricknell. Is he on the line? Hello? Yes. Hello, Paul. Yes, the floor is yours. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just referring to the, the air conditioners that are located on the uh, the south side of the elevation of the uh, the dwelling at 16 uh, Leslie Crescent. Um, the uh, directly adjacent to these uh, air conditioners are uh, in 18 Leslie Crescent, um, which is less than two meters from um, the air conditioners. There, the there are um, habitable rooms, um, and the the air conditioners are mounted. Um, Nearly directly opposite the windows of the second floor, um, which is the habitable bedrooms of that that house, the 18 Lindsay Crescent. So, um, per the council's assessment, the 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 state environmental planning policy states that they shouldn't be you know, mounted higher than 1.8 meters, um, and this is causing most of the problems. Um, they do two things: there's sound pollution and there's also air pollution, uh, air quality pollution that emitted directly from those units straight into the windows, openable windows in the bedroom. So we'd um, a, a simple solution to this would be to you know, just relocate the air conditioning units down below um, the maximum height level of 1.8, um, and that would. Um, you know, eliminate most of those problems and uh, hopefully provide a, a solution for both parties. So, um, Paul, can I ask you a question in relation to that? Yeah. Um, in relation to, uh, from from our site visit today, it looks like the air conditioning is above the roof height of your the property that you're referring to. If it were lowered, would it not be immediately adjacent to the windows? No, they're both, the air conditioners are mounted on the, the same second, the second floor height um, of uh, directly adjacent to the, the bedrooms at the back. So if they were, 
if they were located on the ground um, adjacent to the property, which is which is just garden area, um, they'd be. I mean, that's a suitable solution that it provides an easy place for them to be serviced. Um, the noise and the air pollution would just be circulated around that fence area on the other side of the property. So. Um, I, I suppose I, I'm just remembering what I looked at, and at the moment, uh, above the window, I, uh, the ridge height, E height, sorry. Um, if yeah, they both were lowered, they'd be yeah. immediately adjacent to the window. Yeah, they're both, it's, it's hard to see from the street. Um, if you, the both properties, the air conditioners are sitting below the roof line of the second floor. Um, and on in Asian Basic Crescent, the house is two storeys. All the windows are on the second floor. And I'm um, referring to, to the, the, the windows on your property. Yeah. If, yeah, you know, if, if the air conditioning unit is lowered, is it not going to be directly opposite the window that you're concerned about? Oh, it gets lowered to below the maximum height of 1.8, which is the same height as the fence. Um, it, it'll be basically nearly on the ground, which will just Leave that all the the sound noise will be will be below the fence line, and it will um, it, it won't it won't emit directly across to the house. So just, just okay. All right. The same. All right. Yeah. The, actual, the the fence in between the two properties is um, 1.8 high. So and there's a there's a garden area marked on the drawings next to the fence in in, in 16, and they could be just dropped straight down to the ground level. Okay, has anyone um, got any questions of uh, Mr. Picknell? No, that would be fine. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we will uh, now. Can I, can I just hold one other thing? Yes, I'll just like, I like one more thing. Yep. The, there's an acoustic report that, that's been mentioned in the council uh, the panel document. Um, we, we haven't been privy to that, but we, we don't know what standards have been applied. Uh, because there's nighttime noise levels so that differ um, in the EPA noise uh, guidelines for local government uh, appendices. So um, I don't know if that's been considered because um, it does show a fair use noise calculator in that in that document to uh, um, you know, to. We'll have a we'll check that it. Uh, the, the uh, 5 dBA against background, which is which is the standard against which it would need to be measured, is um, for all hours, and we'll double check that it is yeah. 5 dBA against the night time, which is which is a concern you would reasonably have. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, Tony Majowski. Tony, the floor is yours. Tony, are you there? Tony? Hello. Hello, Tony. Hello. 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 Hello, you're back on with the panel. Okay, I'll accept the other call. Hello, Tony. Yes, speaking. Okay, the floor is yours. What do you want to tell the panel? Uh, good afternoon to all members of the panel. I just wanted to address um, the concerns that I've just heard um, from one of the occupants at number 18, Leslie Crescent Mortel, um, that the AAC is uh, nowhere near the windows and they are above. Um, also, we have obtained all relevant documentations uh, that the council has asked for, such as acoustic reports um, and so on, um, which have been provided to council relevant parties, um, and, and that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's all that's provided. Okay, thank you, Tony. I'll ask the panel if they've got any questions for you. All right. 
Yep, one question from Jason. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't hear you too clear there. Push it on. Hello. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, that's better. Yep. Okay, sorry, there's only a couple of technical difficulties. I was just asking yep. if you have a policy to turn off your air conditioning at night, having some regard to your neighbours, or you keep it going all night? No, that's not a problem. If you guys want to put in uh, something in place certain hours, that's not an issue. Like 10 o'clock or something? Yep, no, that's not no problem at all. I think it'd be a good thing just to talk to your neighbour and maybe try and find something that works for both of you. It's a pretty reasonable thing to do to try and keep it off overnight. Yes. Yeah. Reduce yeah. a bit of energy, reduce a bit of noise. Yeah, no problem. No, I'm not going to have issues with that at all. I think we'll have, like I said, the acoustic report on that done. So I'm not sure we're fine, able to put so conditions... I'm not sure if we're able to put conditions on the building studio. I just encourage you to um, try yeah. and, you know, try and cooperate with your neighbour and find something that's mutually acceptable. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Not a problem. Thank you very much for that. Um, Tony, we'll now uh, move on to the next item. Thank you very much. So the next item is um, 228 James Street, Blakehurst, and... I have um, Jared Teresi and Ricardo Adirossi. Um, uh, they're on separate calls. Okay, so um, perhaps is that J you, Gerald? It is, uh, Madam Chair. Hi, Gerald. Um, do you both with to, wish to speak or just you? Oh, uh, look, I, 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 I do. It's just very short. Um, obviously, we've read through the report and we support the recommendation of approval. Um, we feel that the officer's report is well written and articulates the uh, issues well. Uh, raise one condition of consent, which we've picked up a typo on, uh, which is condition number 24. Um, condition number 24 relates to uh, waste management. Yep. Um, I don't know if the panel members have got access to that condition. We do, we do. Um, okay. Uh, the, the first dot point about 22 times 660 litre bins. I think that's meant to be 240. I hope we're not required to provide 660 litre bins. Um, so I think that was just a typo. So I just would like that to be rectified so uh, it saves a, a four or five modification at a later stage. Well, I do note that the next one, there are 1,100 litre bill bins. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I will um, ask the question of council staff as to whether yeah, they are just, the right size, because they do seem somewhat large. Yes, I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll double check for you. Um, okay. Um, uh, 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 other than that, no, I mean, it's just so that the panel um, has any um, uh, any questions of myself or Ricardo. Ricardo's on the line as well. Uh, they're the... Uh, um, architect, uh, Ricardo, the architect involved in the project. So, if there's any design issues or planning issues, we can. Okay, well, well, perhaps I'll ask yeah. the panel if they've got any questions, and um, then either yourself or if you feel you can't answer the questions, perhaps we'll put, yep. we'll bring the architect on. Yep, okay, so well, Fiona has a question. Hi, Gerard, can you hear me? I can, Fiona. Hi. 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 Um, I was just having a look at your um, basement um, and there's a number of visitor spots, obviously. Um, how would your client feel about uh, putting in some uh, or at least one EV charging station, just um, looking at sustainability? Is that something um, that you'd be willing to do or I know that there's no DCP requirement for that at the moment. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, um, our preference wouldn't be to, 
necessarily to do it, but um, again, mindful if the panel is uh, wanting to impose a condition to that effect, then obviously. Okay. Just thought I'd do so. But I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's not a policy position of the council, and, um, and, and the proposal does comply with yes. all the relevant energy assessments. So, um, so, so it's just a matter, I guess, for the panel. It's not sure. something we would jump to, but then if the panel imposes it, then obviously we will deal with it. Sure. Thank you very much. Perfect. Any other questions? Uh, Fiona has another one, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I did mean to also ask, does the site require its own substation? I just didn't see it referenced anywhere. Did, did you have that information at this point in time? Or? I, did, uh, I'm I can take this one. The architect Ricardo de Rossi. So yeah. the, the the substation is not required for the site because we are um, getting the electricity from the substation to the adjoining site. Fantastic. As long as the main switch room is 30 meters from the substation, which has been designed in such a way. Fantastic. We hope you Thank were. You. And if Fantastic. you weren't, we we're going to suggest you did. Yes. Well, thanks thank you very much. That's good. Any other questions, Jason? Jason had one. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, I thought I heard you say before you were happy with the recommendation and conditions. Is that right? Uh, in terms of the condition, yeah. uh, condition apart, from the, apart from the waste one that you wanted checked. Yeah, just clarification on the uh, yeah, size of the building. Right, okay. right. So that includes undergrounding of the powers, power lines. Are you happy with that? Well, I, we understand that's just something which is yeah. a standard condition. So, I mean, it did seem to me um, that, if, that, I mean, I think the way the word the wording is there is there's some, you know, if it's not practicable or reasonable, there might be an out. But um, I think it would be helpful to your development if those power lines are underground, this will be a better presentation. But it might also give the opportunity for some more street trees. I know there's an overland flow and various infrastructure, but um, I would think it'd be fairly reasonable to place some street trees in front of the site that might also benefit the look and saleability of the development. What do you say about that? I believe there is a condition that restricts um, us to have any trees above the uh, easement. Right. But where there's pos where it's possible to get street trees, you'd be open to it? Only, only on Stewart Lane. And for a really uh, minimal amount, given the uh, frontage is limited by the driveway. Right. But if there's no infrastructure at constraints, are you against or okay with street trees? Again, something uh, that we will need to uh, clarify with the client. Uh, I'm not able to give you the answer at the moment. So I wasn't clear on that answer. If there's no infrastructure constraints for you, are you for or against more street trees? We can possibly um, uh, be uh, for it. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much for that. Oh, look, I do know that there is an easement that's on your property. Absolutely understand that. But I think we're talking about within the street itself. So not within, not on your property, but within the street. So there seems to be no impediment right. along Vaughan Street and James Street. We do know that you've got some lily pillars along Stuart Lane. Um, but I think, what, I think what we're trying to do is see if we can get some more uh, canopy trees along the street, if that's possible. So uh, we're thinking of a condition to that effect. Okay. Understood. Understood. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, panel? No, nope. that, that's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is thank you. Thank you. Okay. Which is twenty nine to thirty one Dora Street, Hurstville, and um, we have uh, Lewis McCauley. Is, are you on the line, Lewis? Lewis, are you on the line? That's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Hello. Hello, Lewis, you're there? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the floor is yours if you'd like to say anything to the panel. Okay, thank you. Do you have the streaming on in the background by any chance? Uh, I do, I'm just trying Actually, to... Because I can hear my voice uh, several, several uh, seconds ago. <laughs> There we go. Thank you, thank you, panel members, for uh, taking my call. Um, so essentially, I just wanted to get online today to say that we are 
fully support the recommendation from Council and the condition of consent put forward, but am um, wholly and solely here to answer any of the questions that the panel may have. Thank you, Liz. Um, panel's shaking their heads. I don't think we have any questions of you. Thank you very much indeed. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Okay, so that was the last item. So what we will do is we'll now close the meeting at, I've got to look at my watch, um, 4, 4, no, not quite, 4.35, um, 4.36. Um, Four forty is it? Oh my watch is slow. Oh gosh, sorry. Four forty and we'll close the meeting. Thank you. Bye.